Discover the exquisite beauty of Islam with our exclusive poster collection showcasing the 99 names of Allah. Each poster meticulously presents the Arabic name, pronunciation and English translation, embodying the essence of our Creator. Elevate your surroundings with these high-quality designs that not only serve as art, but also offer a glimpse into the profound beauty of Islamic culture. Immerse yourself in the collection and unveil the magnificence of the 99 names. Links in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, we're already deep into Ramadan, almost two weeks by now. So therefore, what better timing than now to check out what to eat in Ramadan. Ramadan Diet Tips by Mufti Menk. Many of you guys started following my channel once I reverted to Islam or shortly prior to it, but they don't know the beginnings of my channel where I talked about nutrition extensively. I talked about veganism, the carnivore diet, raw meat eating and what not. So there is a long, long list of nutrition tips on my channel. However, this is the first time that I examine what a mufti has to say about diet tips specifically for Ramadan. Guys, before we jump into the video, as always, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Allah asked you to abstain from food morning to evening. And trust me, when you break your fast in the evening, that's not a sign of doing qada for the lunch that you missed. No. Uh, that makes sense. You have a simple meal. Those who succeed to fast in the most correct way in Ramadan are those who cut down their food in the month of Ramadan. Absolutely. Cut down your food. Eat less. For suhoor, you will be able to have a beautiful day without feeling much. Yeah, this is absolutely correct what he says. Their fasting should be about fasting after all. And therefore, you shouldn't make up the calories that you missed, so to speak, throughout the day at iftar then. And just stuff yourself and eat as much as you can so you get the same amount of food that you usually get. This is not what this is about. This is about getting closer to Allah and therefore reducing your food intake. And moreover, from a health perspective, it's of course was not recommended to stuff in all of those calories in a short eating window. But if right in the morning, before you start the fast, you have had a heavy meal, what happens? The enzymes are digesting, the energy required to digest and everything is happening and acidity is building. By 10 o'clock in the morning, your belly is rumbling because it's calling for more food. Because you had a very heavy meal. That's accurate. So the sunnah is to have a light meal early morning. Suhoor is only for purposes of barakah. So you have something that takes long to digest, perhaps grains, perhaps a bit of uh, porridge or cereal, a That's little a bit of milk, maybe some water, some dates, perhaps dates are high in iron and fiber and so on, and a little bit. And then you see how your day goes because your stomach will not rumble at 10 o'clock. So as I said, that's a contradiction. On the one hand, he's right because he says you should eat a light meal. But then he says you should eat something that digests long. If it digests long, then obviously it's not a light meal. Something that digests quickly, that would be a light meal. However, if you're eating carbs, if you're eating sugar that digests quickly, then of course you end up spiking your insulin levels and through that you go on a blood sugar roller coaster. And as he said, yes, then after that you're getting hungry again at 10 a.m. Therefore, you want something that digests quickly, however, leaves the body nourished and well hydrated. So what can that be? The ideal food here would be animal foods, zero carbs. I know this is absolutely contrary to popular belief. Many people like to eat dates, they like to eat fruits, they like to eat carbohydrates and whatnot. But the best way to sustain your body throughout the day would not be carbohydrates, but would be fats and protein. Fat is a much more sustainable energy source than carbohydrates. It won't spike your blood sugar. And animal foods in general come packed with all the bioavailable and fat-soluble vitamins. So therefore, this is the perfect mixture. If you eat, for example, a bunch of eggs in the morning, they will digest perfectly. You won't feel your stomach at all. They will just get absorbed. But you're getting a lot of fat and all the bioavailable vitamins 
for the day. This way you won't experience any hunger whatsoever. Ideally, you would eat them raw because like that you keep the fluids naturally found within eggs and they would hydrate you throughout the day. However, if you insist to cook your eggs, then you should add some electrolyte beverage, a low sugar, zero sugar electrolyte beverage to the mix as well. This way of eating is called a ketogenic way of eating and it's the best way to prolong your fast because if you eat something and then you go to bed and you're sleeping five, six, seven, eight hours, at some point your blood sugar naturally will regulate and you will get into ketosis. Now your body has no blood sugar to use up anymore and uses fat as an energy source. Now if you wake up and the first thing that you do is consume some sort of sugar that will, yet again for the thousandth time, spike your blood sugar levels and this is how you start the vicious cycle people in the morning they do that they eat some carbs and then three hours later they're starving yet again however when you wake up as i said your blood sugar is already stable and now you just extend that through eating fats and proteins i guarantee you your hunger will be curbed you won't experience any hunger throughout the day the energies are used to digest food so when you have little of it less energy is used but we make a mistake. Yeah, or easily it's like, digest. It's like we, want, we think, okay, I need to hold my breath. So let me take a deep breath. So we take a deep breath. Food is not the same. It doesn't mean I'm not going to be eating up to seven o'clock in the evening. So let me have as much as I can early morning. No, that's not how it works with food. It actually works the other way. When you eat less, you are less prone to becoming hung hungry quick. That's true. Remember this. It's one of the secrets of fasting. When we say secrets, we don't mean hidden in a closet, but what we mean is something that you need to know that a lot of people are unaware of. And in the evening, if you want to read Taraweeh correctly, make sure your iftar is light. You know, if you are going to eat a whole load of biryani and you know, this beautiful rice and everything else that comes with and everything else they, they, they mention, and you have a whole pile of it in the evening and your belly is popping out, you know, you, you think you're going to read Salat al-Taraweeh? You will start Allahu Akbar and firstly your hands are tied like one meter in front of you because that's your belly, you know. Oh. Oh. Allah forgive us. And a little while later we are all the gas is building up in the belly and so on and then this man is disturbing us with his burping and we are disturbing him like a competition and the masjid smells of food. Astaghfirullah. Be a respectable person. That is not how you should treat Ramadan. That is not the case. Have a light meal. Have something healthy. Some of us have fried food as soon as we open the fast. You know, we have savories or fries and so on. Do you know that that is probably the most unhealthy thing you could ever have very on good. an empty stomach? Very well. Yeah, so this is very sound nutrition advice. Not many people talk about it or not many people know about it because it is so cultural to eat fried vegetable oils. But ultimately those oils, back in the day, you can look it up yourself, have been used as motor oils, as lubricants for engines. And then once they understood how to refine and remove certain disgusting odor from those oils and they saw that it's very cheap in production, they started frying food with it. Back in the day, no human being would have ever fried their food in seed oils, in vegetable oils. They used to fry in butter, in ghee, in tallow, in animal fats yet again. Animal fats are full of all bioavailable vitamins. The seed oils, on the other hand, are filled with polyunsaturated fats, anti-nutrients and other crap that is not meant for human consumption. Quite literally, as I said, those fats, those oils, were used for motor engines, for machines, not for the human body. It is not food. Just because everybody does it doesn't mean it's right. Always remind yourself of what the Quran says. Rather, we will follow that which we found our fathers doing even though their fathers understood nothing, nor were they guided. Now, of course, at first you simply think about theology here. You simply think about the message of God. But this applies to every aspect in life. Just because your daddy does it, doesn't mean it is right. How many people are obese and they're feeding their children candies and other crap and make their children fat as well? Always reflect upon what people do. Just because the majority does it, doesn't mean it's right. The most unhealthy thing you could ever have on an empty stomach. The healthiest thing, water, dates, a bit of yogurt, perhaps a bit of bread. Subhanallah. That is extremely healthy. 
No, I disagree. There's nothing extremely healthy about bread. Bread is not healthy at all. There's literally nothing in it that the human body needs. Dates are a fantastic source of minerals. That is true. And to break your fast with dates is quite nice. You have some glucose, some quick carbohydrates, you have some minerals, as I mentioned, that paired with a dairy product, yogurt, as you said, that is not too bad to break the fast. However, then to truly replenish, you will need the animal foods and therefore steaks, eggs, fish, high protein, moderate fat, low to moderate carbohydrates. This is the way to go to replenish your body. In fact, it's part of the sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu The water and the dates and so on, a little bit of bread and yes, some yogurt. The and Subhanallah, the dates sure. amazing. But with us, no, we must have all these fries. You know, they call them pies and samosas and whatever else. I'm not too sure in this part of the world what exactly you have. But it looks nice. It, that is the most unhealthy thing ever, ever, ever that you could have had 100%. on an empty stomach. Not only empty stomach, in general. Fried May stuff is us. pure death. So we need to learn it's some discipline. And this brings me to the entire purpose of the month of Ramadan. يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون O you who believe fasting has been prescribed upon you just as it was prescribed upon those before you in order that you achieve the consciousness of Allah in order that you discipline yourselves within the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So fasting is all about discipline, getting close to Allah. If I can read so much extra salah in Ramadan, at least outside Ramadan, I can fulfill my, my five farah. If I can abstain from all food in Ramadan, then at least out of Ramadan, I can abstain from haram. The month of Ramadan is ahead of us. Do something about it now. All right, that's it for today's video. I'm going to cut it off here. Absolutely correct. And I mentioned this in previous videos as well. Ramadan should be about discipline. And you already are disciplined. Remind yourself of that because you're fasting the whole day through. This is absolutely not normal, man. Nobody else does it. No other religion is fasting the whole day without food and without water. The Catholics... Some of them eat one meal per day, but they're drinking all day through. And that is quite easy if you really think about it. The Orthodox Christians, on the other hand, they're eating a plant-based diet. They're eating vegetables, but they're eating the whole day. They're not really fasting. They're eating a somewhat vegan diet, if you will. There are many different fasting practices, but as Muslims, we already have the hardest fast imaginable. Not eating, not drinking. No normal, average human being does that ever you have to understand how much discipline this takes and you're doing it already so now when you finally break your fast for iftar the only thing that you have to discipline now is your hand just discipline your hand and choose wisely what you will pick why take fried food which is not even meant for humans in the first place and stuff it into your body now you have to choose something healthy but when people hear healthy, they think about broccoli, they think about salads, all of that repulsive gunk. This is not healthy. Healthy are animal foods and those taste great naturally. Great tasting foods minus the vegetable oils. Just discipline yourself once you break the fast and you will reap so many health benefits. It's absolutely insane because the fasting itself is so healthy for the body. You're abstaining of all that junk. But now, after you finished it, you're just replenishing with crap. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to your body. Once you start eating healthy, I'm telling you, just after a couple of days, two or three days, you will feel such a difference that you don't want to go back. So Ramadan could be the start of something absolutely amazing for you. It could change your whole life. The rest of the year, just as you boosted your imam during Ramadan, you can boost your health habits as well, your dietary habits. You could transform your whole body. And once you transform your body, you will transform your life. Don't you want to be healthy for yourself, but for your family as well? 
So in a nutshell, try to cut carbohydrates as much as possible. Prioritize animal foods, not fried in vegetable oils, but rather grilled or steamed or raw. Eat animal foods that contain a certain amount of fat, such as egg yolks or fatty fish or beef, and see how your body will transform. Thank me later. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. Ya nafsu illam tadfari la tajzai Ah